What's up, podcasters? Welcome back. So excited to have you on Your Best Life. And we want to welcome back Katie Stedman, the RNOB nurse, on back on our podcast today. So thanks for coming, Katie. It's good to be back. Awesome to have you. You were so much fun to have. So we are ready to dig in and talk more about what to expect when you're expecting. So this is actually part two of the podcast uh, for preparing for baby. Uh, Last week, if you hadn't had a chance to listen to that podcast, go back and listen to it. You get a lot of great information. So we're going to continue on that great conversation we had with Katie. So let's go with it. So you have the baby. um, That super pain that you had is done. What happens then to a woman's body? I mean, what happens? What can they expect after the baby's out? I mean, do they ever have pain or how long does it take for the epidural to wear off? Those type of things. So typically it takes about two hours for the epidural to wear off. But those two hours are like the fastest two hours of your life because during that time, your nurse is going to be pushing on your uterus every 15 minutes. The reason for that is that when there's a baby in your uterus, your uterus is stretched out. Well, the normal size of a uterus is about the size of your fist or a softball. So after the baby is delivered, We want to see your uterus continue to contract back down to its normal size. So when your nurse will come in, she will push on your abdomen to make sure that that uterus feels hard and that you're not having too much bleeding. So the nurses at Mercy One um, in Waterloo do that every 15 minutes for two hours. Once that two hours is up, typically you should be able to lift your legs off the bed. And in that first two hours, you're breastfeeding for the first time. And your nurse is like giving you an ice pack for your bottom and changing out all of the chucks pads underneath of you. I literally think the labor and delivery nurses are God's gift to this earth. Yes, they are like an- <laughs> earth angels. Yeah. Um, so after about two hours, when you feel like you can get up and walk, they'll fill a bath up for you and you can get into the bath. And then it's like the cleaning fairies just come and they take all the bloody stuff away, mm-hmm. all the equipment away. And then they kind of make your hospital room more like a hotel room. Mm-hmm. So once you come out after that initial two hours of recovery, then you're you're just a postpartum patient and you're nursing the baby and pain what's what what's a typical woman's pain after birth so after a vaginal birth you'll experience bottom pain because you've pushed a baby out um so sometimes vaginal swelling if you've had stitches or anything like that they'll give you an ice pack for your bottom to help with that but those warm tub soaks will be your best friend for probably that first week mm-hmm. after having a baby um so in the hospital we recommend that people can take a bath every couple of hours. You can take two to three, four baths a day. Um, That will help the swelling in your bottom go down as well. Even after you leave the hospital? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then... um, In a straight bath, no soap, nothing? You you can use a little soap if you want. Like draft or... Or we just at the hospital use the baby Johnson & Johnson baby soap and we'll just put a little of that in the water. Nothing super scented with the perfumes and things Mm -hmm. like that. And then you'll feel contraction pain even the whole first week or two after having Mm -hmm. the baby as your uterus is continuing to cramp back down. When you breastfeed, your body is again releasing all of those hormones to your body. So that's going to cause more cramping. A lot of people will say um, the second that the baby latches on and they start to breastfeed that they'll feel all of that pain from the contractions. And honestly, as I had more kids, I felt like the swelling was worse down below, but the cramping was worse. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the swelling was less, less. worse, yeah, mm-hmm. down below, but the cramping was worse as I would nurse the babies. Um, the cramping just became more intense. Um, and people will c- sometimes can experience some bleeding while they're breastfeeding those first couple of times as well. Breast pain, probably the first day you go home from the hospital is when your milk comes in. So um, sometimes people will experience pain with engorgement as well. Um, So you just want to nurse your baby through that. Or if you're not breastfeeding, then you want to like wear a tight fitting sports bra and kind of just wait for that milk to subside. Some people recommend putting cabbage leaves on your breasts if you feel engorged and you're kind of trying to get that to go away. Yeah, that was painful. Yes, very. (laughs) That was very painful. I experienced that with all my babies and And it is one of the worst. I remember waking up to those and thinking oh my god where did they come from Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know I actually had someone take a picture of them because I was like I'll never see them that big again (laughs) yes yes I know and it happens like in the blink of an eye you like take a nap and you wake up and you feel like Pam Anderson (laughs) like all of a sudden totally I mean I still and I had my sports bra on but I don't even know what happened it was like I woke up literally and it's like they were there Mm -hmm. so but it was very painful too and I remember 
my physician then telling me to put a bag of peas, mm -hmm. frozen peas on yep. them or whatever helps. So it definitely helps putting those mm -hmm. the ice on there on the top and bottom. Yes. I definitely do yes. that too. And I agree with you. I think my first child, I don't remember the pain as much even after I had her. But my second child, I don't know if it's because I was older mm -hmm. um, and my body knew, or maybe I just more aware of what to expect. But the second time I also felt a little more cramping after mm -hmm. I had him than my first child. I think that first child you go in a oblivious to anything and you're blissful you're yeah. blissful and yeah so that second child I was like okay I had Jack and I was like give me a pizza <laughs> I'm hungry mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know how much work I did <laughs> I always joke when we brought our first baby home from the hospital I sat in the back seat with the baby and we pulled up to Target yep. and ran in and got my prescriptions and tux pads and all of the stuff when we had our second baby when we came home from the hospital we pulled in and I got like a six pack of Corona cause totally because I, I hadn't been able to drink for 10 months so it was like first and second baby differences that is so funny you said that because that is exactly how I was I was in the back seat with my daughter and you know you come into your house and it's like she's fragile yes. and the dogs are looking at mm -hmm. us like I'm like uh, and you just do everything different that second mm -hmm. time around because you realize that you know you're more relaxed. confident yes relaxed yes. And, and I too I went and got myself a, a nice drink and I was like <laughs> this is this is what life's about yes. you know so yes. to to enjoy it more mm -hmm. not that you don't the first time around but you're oblivious to a lot and of and you're things. anxious that you're yeah. going to screw something up yeah so then post pregnancy um when do you return to the physician what can they expect as far as how often they have to come back to see a physician so um with the baby here in Waterloo at Mercy One, we do a newborn assessment clinic, which I think is so nice. You go home from the hospital for about like 48 to 72 hours, and then you'll bring the baby back in for a newborn assessment appointment. Um, this service is free of charge. Um, at this appointment, you come, you bring your baby in. They'll weigh your baby to make sure there's not too much weight loss. Um, they will check your baby's jaundice levels. Um, just kind of check in on you guys. How'd you guys do the first couple of days home? Some people are just smooth, smooth skating at this point. Like we're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, personally, when we brought our first baby to the newborn assessment clinic, our baby had lost weight. I wasn't breastfeeding appropriately. I was crying. I was mm -hmm. hormonal. Um, but I was so thankful for that newborn assessment clinic appointment because the lactation consultant came in and sat with me for over an hour, helped me figure out how, how to nurse the baby better. And it was just like a good check-in point for us. I definitely think you make a good point that even if you you don't live where we're ta we're talking, she she had mentioned Waterloo. If you're listening to this anywhere, there are places like this anywhere that you can look into because I do think mothers need that physician re support, the nursing support, people who know how to help. Because as a new mom, you're nervous, you're scared, mm -hmm. and to if you are someone that's having a baby, to look at facilities that have these types of places where you can have aftercare for the mama and the baby because there's so much that goes on in your head and you you're right you're emotional and you just need someone there for that support well everyone is always asking how how is the baby doing how's the baby doing but I do feel like people forget to ask how is the mom doing and just physiologically in your body when you are pregnant your placenta is what supplies all your body's hormones for nine months well, then you deliver that baby and you deliver the placenta. So just physiologically, your hormones are completely out of whack after you have the baby. Well, then you're going to mix that in with um, not sleeping at all because you're feeding this baby around the clock. You're sore physically from having this baby. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of the recipe for some tearful days. Mm -hmm. When your milk comes in, usually that first day that you're home from the hospital, that is another huge surge of hormones that the mama will get which will cause tearfulness for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. It's like where you're watching TV and you don't know why you just yeah. can't stop these tears. They yep. just keep flowing. That is a normal, normal part of pregnancy and a normal part of delivery. And I try to educate all of our mamas on that because I don't think people tell you that. And you're just expected to go home with this cute baby and know all the right things to do. And you're so emotional and tired and sore. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that time frame is a very important and normal time frame to feel overwhelmed, tired, tearful. Um, it will go away. I remember, uh, you know, and it seems like the postpartum depression gets talked a lot more about now than it ever did even back in my day. And you want to be super mom. You don't want anybody to know that I have no idea why I feel 
uh, I don't even know what the word is, but you just cry for no reason. And there might be this loneliness feeling or this just a array of emotions for no reason, even though you're super happy. I remember I went to my parents' house. It was two weeks after I had my first child and I was talking to my parents and my father's 70 something. And I start crying and my dad looks at me and he goes, are you having one of those, um, what do you call it? <laughs> postpartum depression things right now? And I'm like, I think I am. I mean, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's like the first, you want to be this super mom, this super woman. And I, I feel like saying to every single mom out there, you're going to have those days where you will cry for no reason. And it's absolutely okay. And if you have a lot of those days, that's when you need to find support, Mm -hmm. you know, more than just your family. Well, and I think in this day and age too, like of Instagram and Facebook, you're always seeing everybody's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. Nobody's posting a picture of all the dishes in their sink. They're posting a picture where maybe it's the one square of their house that's super clean and their baby is smiling and, No one's posting a picture of their postpartum body. They're posting the picture of them in the gym four months out from having a baby where they look great. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think sometimes as a mom, too, that can feel lonely. Like, gosh, all these other moms are breezing right through all of this. And Mm -hmm. I'm the one sitting here and I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it is it is a very emotional time. I can remember with our first baby, I had some errands to run. So I was nursing the baby throughout the day, but then, you know, he was in his car seat and we went to Target and we went here. And by the time I knew it, the day was over and I began to cry. And my dad said to me, what are you crying about? And I said, I didn't even stimulate him (laughs) today. (laughs) My dad said, stimulate him. It's your job to keep him alive for the first couple of months. You can worry about stimulating him later. But I just felt like, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything to help his brain grow today. But we're just hard on ourselves I think you know you have to love that baby feed that baby and give them a warm place to sleep yeah and the rest will work itself out and hopefully you have a a great support system in the father and the family Mm -hmm. that realize you know especially for the moms out there your your mom knows how you're gonna feel you know and to have those support systems hopefully in place but if you don't there are places out there that can give you that support you know so just don't be afraid to ask for it if you need it because even if you didn't feel that way on your first pregnancy, there's nothing to say, because every pregnancy is different, Absolutely. that you may experience that your second mm-hmm. or third or fourth pregnancy. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you never know what your body's hormones are going to do. Absolutely. So just to just to put it out there that everybody needs help once in yep, a while. And for sure. We, we are super moms, but not every day do we have mm-hmm. to be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know. Okay, so postpartum, let's kind of get back to the breastfeeding stuff. I, I uh, back 20 years ago, yes, um, they did, you know, talk to us a lot about breastfeeding and the importance of breastfeeding. If you are a, a person that wants to breastfeed, can you tell our listeners as far as when do you prepare to start breastfeeding? Do you prepare your, do you go see a lactation specialist before you have the baby? Or, you know, what happens once you have the baby? When do they you know, when do they place that baby on you? Is it right away? Can you talk a little bit about that? So I would highly suggest if you plan on breastfeeding to take a breastfeeding class prior to delivery. That's not saying if you don't do the breastfeeding class, then you're doomed once the baby comes. I just think it's good to have that base knowledge prior to the baby coming for breastfeeding. I think a lot of people feel like, well, I'm going to have this baby. It's going to come out. It's going to look at my nipple and know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the case, especially for first time moms. You've never breastfed and your baby's never breastfed. So those first couple of weeks can be a learning process with breastfeeding. Once you figure it out and it clicks, breastfeeding can and is the easiest thing in the world. But it is hard to kind of figure it out in the beginning. It can be. So I think that the breastfeeding class will prepare you for that. At Mercy One, we have wonderful lactation consultants and they are readily available. If you deliver in the middle of the night and there's not a lactation consultant to come in and help you, all of the nurses are so good at helping you get the baby latched for the first time. Is that immediate then? Once the baby comes out, they they latch right away? Do they try that right away once they clean them up within the first hour? Yes, absolutely. We want our babies to breastfeed within the first hour of life. So the nurse can help you with that. Some mamas are like, hey, you just were staring at me naked for the last 12 hours. I just need a moment to try to nurse my baby on my own for a little bit. And that's totally fine, too. So some moms either want the help or they don't want the help initially. And that's totally fine. We usually always just let the moms lead. 
when you first start nursing, it's not like your baby's getting an entire bottle of breast milk because your body's not making that much and your baby doesn't need that much. Um, they will show you a little card in the hospital that shows that at like one day old, your baby's tummy is the size of like a cherry. So that's all the amount of fluid that, you know, your baby needs to be nourished. I think that would have been great back in my day because my assumption was it's that they have an empty belly. Mm -hmm. And so right away I was like, oh my gosh, they're not drinking enough. They're not drinking Mm -hmm. enough. But seeing that visually as a cherry Mm -hmm. changes your whole perspective of how much they really need to be healthy. Yeah. And even if the baby isn't latching well, you can just manually express a drop of that colostrum onto your nipple and put the baby up to up to that. And if they get 15 drops of that colostrum, that can count as a feeding for two hours. Can you explain what colostrum is to our listeners? So the colostrum is like the the super milk. It's the milk before the milk. So that's the first milk that comes in and that's full of all of the really good antibodies and things that will help protect your baby from getting sick and things like that. It's all of the really good nutritious stuff for the baby. Um, That is like more yellow in color versus white. And typically the colostrum stays for like the first couple of days, but it can linger on longer as well. And then once your milk comes in, it'll start to be more of a white color. But the colostrum is, again, the first like milk that comes. We have super bodies, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing that our bodies do that. Absolutely. You know, it's just incredible. So once, um, how often do they usually have the baby feed on the mom? How do they know? Like, I know my biggest worry was, how do I know? I mean, I had, we have bottles, yes, that tell you, but if they're breastfeeding, how do they know how much they're getting when they start actually getting milk? So you don't know with um, breastfed babies how much they're getting, but I just try to tell people not to get too much about the amount. If your baby is having wet diapers and dirty diapers, you know that they're staying hydrated and and that they are getting something. In the hospital, we want you to breastfeed your baby every two to three hours. Initially, a newborn won't necessarily cry to let you know that they're hungry. Um, So you kind of have to remind them it's time to eat. And sometimes the second day or so, the babies do go through a very sleepy state where they might not necessarily wake up to eat. So you have to kind of remind them it's time to eat Mm -hmm. every three hours. Um, After the first couple of weeks, they'll kind of go into their own routine where they'll wake up and cry and let you know that they're hungry. So yeah, every couple of hours in the hospital, if you do happen to send your baby to the nursery because you're tired and you want to just have a little break, um, the nurse will bring the baby back after a couple of hours. Um, Most hospitals have you keep a log of how often you're feeding the baby, um, what side you fed the baby from, and how long the baby nursed for. So that kind of helps keep track of the baby's feedings as well. What things should a mother expect as far as challenges with breastfeeding? I know you said some babies, well, they don't know how to latch on. And if you're a new mama, you don't know necessarily how to make them latch on. Mm -hmm. What are some techniques or things that you look for to help them latch on? I think the number one thing is realizing the hunger cues before the baby is screaming and super hungry because sometimes it's harder to calm a crying baby down to get them to relax enough to latch on. Um, Other things that you can do to help latch a baby on is manually squeeze like a drop of that colostrum or milk out onto your nipple and kind of put your nipple underneath the baby's nose so they can smell that milk and then just bring their, their mouth to your breast. So those are some things that help with the latching process. Some of the hurdles early on with um, breastfeeding are like sore nipples and things like that. I had that with all of my babies, the sore week or so period. And I do specifically with my first son remember feeling like, how does anybody ever do this for a year? Because every time the baby sucked, I just wanted to go through the roof. But once... It both clicked for us and we had a good latch and the baby, um, he started to like figure out nursing and I felt more confident with it too. I remember sitting up at like 3 a.m. thinking, gosh, I feel bad for all the people that are like mixing bottles in the middle of the night because Mm -hmm. it's just easy for me to nurse. Mm -hmm. So it has its um, pros and cons for sure, but I think definitely more pros than cons with breastfeeding. You never have to bring bottles with you anywhere you go. You have your baby's food readily available. I I will say personally too, with the more children I had, the more confident I felt breastfeeding in public as well. Um, With our first baby, I had like the cover and I'd go in a public restroom and sit on the stop, sit in the stall and nurse the baby. And now by baby number three, it's like, well, 
I'm going to feed the baby here. And if you get get a nipple slip, you get a nipple (laughs) slip. I'm sorry. Well, just don't look. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, so many, so many, like clothing has changed immensely since my day. Yes. You had to literally lift your shirt up back Mm -hmm. in my day. Well, now they have maternity tops. Yeah, the nursing nursing shirts and sweatshirts and yeah. Yeah. So you can be much more... um, well, nobody even knows you're doing it half the time yep. because the blanket, the light mm-hmm. blanket's up there. So yep. unless they're really looking, they shouldn't even notice mm-hmm. that you're doing that. So how long should a mother breastfeed for? I think that's just a personal decision to each his own. I always say set a little goal for yourself. Maybe it's six weeks. Maybe you just want to make it through your maternity leave. And if you achieve that goal, um, continue on. But I also, too, just want to stress fed is best. I think a fed baby is the best baby. So if you do feel like you're not making enough milk, which is making um, a domino effect of a cranky baby, and you're starting to feel, you know, like your baby's colicky because they're not getting enough food, and then you're anxious and you can't relax and enjoy motherhood, I just think fed is best. I think that's a that's a great terminology. I've never heard that, but I think f- even at the beginning, if 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 a mother isn't comfortable, the, I've always heard the baby's going to know that too. Exactly, exactly. So I think um, one year is a is kind of a goal that a lot of people set for themselves because after a year, they a child can have cow's milk or almond milk or mm-hmm. anything like that. But I just think if you ever fall short of that, you're not a failure. You're you're doing the best you can for this baby. So some countries nurse their babies for years and years, but I think it's just a personal thing. And I think it's hard to set out. I am definitely going to do this. You mm-hmm. have to just kind of roll with the punches as things go on. Um, my first little boy, I breastfed him for one year. He didn't ever have a drop of formula. And then my second little boy, was just a big eater and by 10 months I couldn't keep up with him so he had formula the last Mm -hmm. two months Um, and now I'm four months in with this baby and who knows what our nursing journey will look like but yeah I think that if you want to do it and you commit to doing it that education is key and then also bringing the dads involved a lot of dads will be like well she's breastfeeding so I really can't do anything to help And so I think right off the bat, a lot of breastfeeding moms, the dads aren't super involved because they just feel like, well, the baby only needs you. Um, But I don't think that could be anything more from the truth. Sometimes you just want companionship. So even if you're the one nursing this baby at 2 a.m., sometimes it is just nice to Mm -hmm. have your husband rub your back or go get you an ibuprofen and some water and just doing things like that to make sure that things are going smooth for you. Well, and I think too, you know, you're a working mom, you have to pump in a bottle. And so those times where I'm sure the baby takes the bottle, Mm -hmm. um, that's when the father can connect with the baby Mm -hmm. too. So to take the responsibility of you having a little break to go play with the other kids Mm -hmm. and giving them attention so the dad and mom can enjoy both sides Mm -hmm. of it. (laughs) Absolutely. So it is nice once in a while for you to sleep too. (laughs) Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, you know, and three's a lot. So yes. Yeah. Oh, one's a lot. I you know, know what I mean? Yes. So I always said the second one, my, my, when I had two is a little easier actually for me because my first one helped so uh-huh. much with my second one. Well, and then so. they start to entertain themselves yes. each other a little bit, but I do think as the kids get harder, they get cuter too. It's oh, probably yeah. like God's design. Like, yep. you know, as they get to the terrible twos, they're so stinking cute that <laughs> even when they are bad, it's like, well, you, you still, still love, love it. Them. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a woman that you know, sets a goal and you don't make it, you, like you said, feeding is just best whenever you can, whatever you can do to get that. Let's say I decided, all right, I'm going to stop breastfeeding. What should I be aware of as far as how my body's going to react? Um, you know, how long should it take the baby to wean onto a bottle at that point? Did you have any difficulties yourself with a bottle versus a nipple? Well, because I am a working mom, I knew that my kids were going to have to take a bottle when I went back to work. So I tried to introduce a bottle a couple of times throughout my maternity leave so that they would drink out of a bottle. And none of my kids luckily had any problems taking a bottle, but some babies do um, have a hard time. Personally, me as a baby didn't want to take a bottle. And when my mom went back to work, it was kind of a struggle. So I do know that some people struggle from that. 
I think you can try different bottles. I would say if this is your first baby, I wouldn't spend hundreds of dollars on one type of bottle because your baby might not take that kind of bottle. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's a good idea in the first couple of months to introduce a bottle a couple of times. And then as far as weaning from breastfeeding goes, it's kind of different depending on the time frame that you do decide to wean from. Um, So I weaned around one And my kids by then were eating table foods at that time too. So it wasn't like my breasts were making so much milk every single day because it was only Mm -hmm. feeding a baby breast milk. So by that time, my breasts had started to kind of settle down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm feeding the baby in the morning. So it was a natural occurrence. Yeah. So I didn't feel like I got super engorged as I quit nursing either of my boys. Some people will say, though, I wanted to make it to six months and now I'm going back to work or I'm doing this, so I'm just done breastfeeding. And that's fine, too. Um, But your your breasts might become engorged. So that's where we would wear the tight-fitting sports bra. You can use the cabbage leaves. Try not to stimulate more milk production because the more that you – the more milk that comes out – that's just going to tell your body to keep, make keep another two ounces it. of milk. So sometimes it is kind of painful those first couple of days as you're doing the weaning process and trying to um, get your milk to dry up, but it will eventually, your body will realize, okay, I haven't nursed for X amount of time, so I'm going to slow down making this milk. And do you, I know there's a lot of myths around if I breastfeed about periods and getting pregnant. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that breastfeeding is not a form of birth control (laughs) um that was a big one back in my day that used to be like oh if you're breastfeeding you can't get pregnant and it's like every single one person that was breastfeeding got pregnant (laughs) yes yes so breastfeeding is absolutely not a form of birth control however some people will not have periods while they're nursing I didn't have a period the whole year that I nursed my my children Um, But you're still, you're able to conceive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, some people will get a period and some people won't. And sometimes, even if you haven't had a period, you ovulate before you get the Mm -hmm. period. So if you get, you know, you Mm -hmm. could get pregnant before you even ever got that first period. So, yeah, you, you can expect to probably not have a regular period over the course of breastfeeding, but you still need to use some form of birth control if you don't want to become pregnant again. All right. So I guess um, one more last question. Since so you're you're done breastfeeding, you're coming off that breastfeeding. Is it, I know there's a lot of benefits for the baby with breastfeeding. What are some of the benefits of the mom breastfeeding other than the connection and the bond with the baby? Well, it's free. <laughs> I always thought that was nice. I didn't yes. have to buy um, formula. That's thousands of dollars mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Some people will say it helps them lose a lot of that baby weight because you're, um, you know, as you're nursing, you're kind of getting rid of those calories as well. So kind of those things. And I just do think it fulfills you to know that you're nourishing your baby. So yeah, I think a lot of good benefits for mamas. I do. I did read a couple of articles that um, breastfeeding can lower your risk of breast cancer. So I thought that that was kind of interesting, Mm -hmm. but a lot of good benefits for moms. You have a nice full chest for the (laughs) amount of time that you're nursing. And we won't talk about what happens after. No, we won't. (laughs) Just stay positive. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Well, I, I want to tell you, I could talk to you all day about this and I think there's thousands of questions women and men, our listeners could ask you about, um, personal questions that I'm sure you hear a lot mm-hmm. in the offices when you're with women and, and their their husbands. But we got to cut it short. We got to cut it today because, um, you know, we've got to let you go back to work. And, yep. and I just want to say it was great talking to you. You have such a wealth of knowledge, not only as an OB nurse, but also because you're a mama yourself. So you experience it, you live it, mm-hmm. and we really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully can have you back on again with Absolutely. different topics about this. So yeah. thank you so much, Katie. Thank you for having me. All right, podcasters, that's it for today. Send us your feedback. You know we'd love to hear from you. Uh, send us your feedback at www.mercyone.org slash podcast. I'm going to say that again, www.mercyone.org slash podcast. Love to hear from you. And as always, live your best life.